caught my wife cheating on me and I know exactly when it started. Welcome to Castbull, friends comment what you think about this story share your experiences also give me like, subscribe and click on the bell for more Castbull stories. I caught my wife with lover in our bed and I kicked him out of my house. Oh boy. This is long. I am 44 years old and my soon to be ex-wife is 39, we have been married for 11 years, no children, we were a pretty chubby couple until two years ago I had a blood test and it came back that I was prone to diabetes, gout and hypertension. It really scared me and we both bit by bit started to have a very healthy life. I went from 117 to 85 kg and my wife, let's call her Jane, from 83 to 65 kg. We felt great and needless to say I never developed those diseases. We attended to a gym almost daily in the afternoon where Lover worked as a coach. Let us call him Baldy. When my wife started getting in shape I noticed most guys turned to see her. I felt so proud of her. She is fairly busty and she has magnificent legs. Of course Baldy wasn't the exception. I notice Baldy likes to check women's body. I've seen him doing it several times, and he likes to show off how ripped he is. When Jane and I were regulars at the gym I noticed she was enjoying the attention she got from men. Once we were using the elliptical machines, in front of them there is a cable machine. Baldy took off his t-shirt and started doing crossovers. I turned to my Jane my face of, can you believe this guy, but she was staring at him and she wet her lips. I saw Baldy and I swear he was grinning. I felt crushed. I mean, I was getting in shape but I am not as muscular and fit as he is. When we were driving home, I make a comment about Baldy showing off and Jane said, really? I didn't notice, I told her, you were staring, she said, I don't remember. I must have been thinking in something else, I shrugged it and kept driving, but from there on I noticed they were talking more frequently at the gym. Some weeks later Jane was doing sit-ups using the Smith machine. Suddenly Baldy went to help her, isn't he nice? He was touching her waist and I got angry. She finished the first set and I got there and told him in a not nice way, I got it from here, Baldy just similied and told me, no problem buddy, he calls everybody buddy, and walked off. Jane knows me very well and heard my angry tone. She just said, OMG OP. I told her, we'll discuss this at home, at home drama blowed up. She called me immature and jealous. I told her I noticed he was trying to get into her pants, she said that she knows that but she would never cheat on me. I said then why she let him touch her and she said she didn't want to be rude. About an hour later arguing we agreed to change gym. So we went to another place to do exercise but Jane was resentful at me in the following months, her argument was that I don't trust her. On the third month after we changed gym, a very good opportunity opened up in my job, but in the afternoon. I took it and we had to attend the gym at different hours. I went in the morning and Jane in the afternoon. This is when it all went south. Jane's resentment increased and we barely speak. I sent her messages telling her about my day, that I miss her, memes. But she rarely replied or just, yes, okay, same here, ha ha ha, I was very worried and proposed couple therapy. She said I was the one who needs therapy because I'm the one with trust issues. I agreed. I was so desperate to fix our marriage that I even thought it was all my fault. So the following year I went to therapy but Jane's behavior didn't change. We weren't intimate anymore, she never was in the mood. I snooped to her phone but didn't find anything out of the ordinary. I searched her car for a second phone. Nothing. I tracked her phone and map history. It only showed me house workhouse gym house. Whenever I tried to talk to her, she just said she feels that she's having a 40s phase. It'll pass. I never had any evidence of cheating so I continued working and worrying. We live in a condo. The security guard, a very cheerful man called Mr. P, greeted me. We chat a lot. He was touching his shoulder and told me yesterday he had to move a heavy sofa and he has some pain today. I was sympathetic and he dropped the bomb. Maybe you can arrange a meeting with your massagist, I told him, who? He said, the guy who came yesterday to massage Mrs. Jane. It took me a second to process this. I told him, do you have a video of him? I think he noticed I was pale and hurried to show me. Guess who? 
Baldi of course, he has come a few times to massage my wife. I took the day off and started investigating. I asked a co-worker for his car and in the afternoon I followed Jane. She parked her car at the mall where the gym is, and there is Baldi waiting for her. They giggle and behave like a couple. Kisses, hugs and I feel nearly to tear. They walk a couple of blocks and go into a residential area. I try to follow them with my phone ready to record, but the guard stopped me and asked, can I help you? I just said, what a nice couple, do you know them? He said he think they are newlyweds, but can't tell me anything else. I called Jane but never answered. I returned to the mall and wondered, why that place doesn't show on the map. I dial again and I can hear her phone inside her car. That's why. I also found out Jane hasn't attended the gym in 8 months. I didn't know that day was the last day I slept with Jane in the same bed. I returned the car and went home, and called my parents. Fortunately my dad answered and I told him everything. I was crying and he comforted me and told me to get evidence. Obviously my marriage is over, and I need all I can gather while he'll contact one of his friends who is an excellent divorce lawyer. Jane called me when saw the two missing calls, I just told her I was already at home and she told me, I'm on my way from the gym. My butt is killing me, yeah, I can guess. When she saw me she asked, what happened, why did you cry? I don't know how but I was emotionally focused, I smiled and told her I got the flu that's why I left work early. Don't come near me, it might be the bug I'll be tested tomorrow. I'll sleep in the spare room. She agreed. I cried silently and didn't sleep a wink. Nearly midnight I heard her giggling. I guess she's messaging Baldy but I didn't find any evidence of contacting another man. Then it hit me, why didn't I see it earlier? I bet Lover is disguised as one of her female co-workers. In the morning while Jane was in the shower I took her phone and created a session in my laptop and put her phone in the same place, we both can unlock our phones. The Cezazen works while the phone is close to my laptop or in the same Wi-Fi account. Then I saw it. Under a female name, the profile picture was a dumbbell. I entered and most of the conversations were deleted, I guess they use work words as code in case I snooped, can you deliver the papers in my desk? I know she doesn't have a desk at work. Going to the meeting, where are you? On the top of them, boss is in his office. He's clueless, pretty clever. I guess I am, boss, because I know her boss is a woman, Jane got out of the shower and saw me, you look worse, why don't stay with your parents? I denied the idea thinking of getting evidence. After Jane went out I contacted my dad and gave me the name and number of the lawyer, I called him and explained everything. He told me the captions are useless, they don't have any factual evidence since his not lover's name and she was smart enough to leave pieces of conversation that looks pretty innocent. I can take pictures of them at the mall but she can argue they are just good fellas and I can't invade into the residential area without permission because it might get me into more trouble. At work I was in zombie mode, thinking how to get evidence. I might install secret cameras in my house but Baldy rarely goes to my home and Jane might find them. Unless. I'm out of the picture. I texted Jane and told her I'm positive of the bug and I'll stay at my parents because I might need help. She liked the idea and told me she would miss me but she'll call me every day. When I hung up, I called my dad and my brother. When I got home she has already packed a suitcase for me. She was so eager of getting rid of me. I told her I'll take my laptop and then I checked her messages, boss will be out of the office, wanna come to my desk. She sent this message almost after I told her I was positive. Good, she bit. We didn't have dinner, no kisses, no hugs. I noticed her watching the time twice. From the door I told her, I'll miss you. I was expecting her to shut the door on my face, but she walked me to my car. And I was gone. My dad and brother were outside the building waiting for Baldy to appear, but he didn't show up. I thought why did she walk me to my car? Of course. Because Baldy was already inside the building waiting perhaps inside her car. I came back hurried to my house and entered silently. I heard music coming from the bedroom and the moaning. Next to the door there is a sofa, his and her clothes were on it. I put my phone to record and opened the bedroom door and there she was, my wife, the love of my life for eleven years in all four and Baldy behind her. 
I got a very good seconds o both of their faces when they saw me open the door. Jane screamed and covered herself with the blanket. Baldy went alpha male immediately walking naked towards me, I took a shot of him doing raw my wife, he yelled aggressively at me, why don't go for a walk buddy. I hit his troth with my hand opened. I saw this movement in the Mel Gibson movie, Ransom. The next second Baldy was coughing and gasping kneeling on the floor. I yelled, get out of my house, and kicked him out. I threw his clothes at him when my dad, brother and Mr. P were arriving to my house. I told them, I'll take it from here, and closed the door. Jane was still on the bed covering herself, she was trembling. I told her, I have never hurt you nor will I, get dressed, I'll wait you in the living. While I was waiting I sent the video to my lawyer and he answered, jackpot. A few minutes later Jane showed up, she couldn't see me in the eyes. I started recording the conversation. I asked why. She didn't answer. Was I such an awful husband to you? She started crying but didn't answer. Do you love him? Noting. I stand up and hit the table, say something Jane. She opened her eyes wide and started trembling again, like a puppy when is scared. I sat and talked calmly. My lawyer will contact you for the divorce. Get a lawyer, she finally spoke. We can fix this. Fix what? Our marriage was over since Baldy was on the picture and you choose him over me, it was a mistake, no it wasn't, it was a choice, you chose and this is the consequence. What did you think would happen when I find out? Silent again. Go to your sisters and tell her the truth or I will show her the video, she went to the bedroom and started packing. I followed her and watched. Since two days ago I was trying to convince myself my wife is long gone. The person who I shared my house with is not my wife. But seeing her, putting her clothes inside the suitcase neatly, with her gracious movements and those little things I love of her hit me hard. I went to the spare room and started ugly crying. I heard when she closed the main door. She picked her clothes that were on the sofa. She made the bed where I caught them and I dropped on the floor. So much later I called my dad. He told me Baldy wanted to press charges, but Mr. P told him he didn't resist her in the entrance, so he's trespassing, the condo can sue him, he dropped it and went out. My nosy brother pressed his ear on the door and my dad took him from the other ear to his car. I was exhausted. The previous days I didn't sleep well. So I almost passed out on the spare room. Next morning my phone had a lot of Jane's messages apologizing and asking for a second chance. I just blocked her. My sister-in-law called me, apparently Jane hasn't told her what happened, just that we're fighting. I guess it's good my father-in-law is not alive to see Jane's behavior, she was the youngest and his favorite. The mother is emotionally unwell, all this happened a week ago. Next week Jane is going to be served. TLDR, I caught my wife with our gym coach in our bed and I know when and how it started. Friends comment what you think about this story share your experiences also give me like, subscribe and click on the bell for more Caspel stories. Comments on this story. 1. Stay strong my man. And be prepared for the biggest bunch of BS to get thrown at you over the next few weeks. She's so sorry, she only loves you. She doesn't know what she was thinking. All the usual ridiculous. This is so much worse than a run-of-the-mill affair in that she found it amusing to use secret code words that made you look like some loser. She couldn't wait to get Baldy in your house, Ella is ridiculous and the only answer here is scorched earth my friend. Bury them both. I can't think of more deserving people. 2. Op don't stop working out, keep eating right, throw away the bed, and put the condo up for sale. I won't find a new one. That one is tainted. Sounds like you have a support system, and just get back into some hobbies to keep you busy, along with your support group, and your work. Op just another thought, you should go take a week or two vacation with some buddies, and go somewhere the women are aplenty, and enjoy your time away. Don't post, until the divorce is finalized. Edit, saw you were trying for kids, take half that money you saved and use it for this vacation. Make sure the money is earmarked, and don't forget to open up a new account. OP, I completely agree with you. I started paying for this place for 10 years, before I married my soon-to-be ex-wife, now I can't get into the room where I found them. 
I've intalled in the spare room now but just as you say, it's tainted. I'll sell as soon as the divorce is over. Good part is Jane signed a prenup thanks to my dad. I love that wise man. 3. Baldy goes from one woman to the next as he gets caught or the women bugs him for commitment. You need to contact the gym where he works and inform the owner what Baldy did and you might bring legal action against the gym if they do not do something with Baldy. The minute your wife started arguing was the minute Baldy started screwing your wife. You are your wife's security and ATM. I always found the best revenge is living good and taking the silver and gold away from Baldy and your wife. Opie, totally agar with you. I will contact my old gym and tell them what happened. I hope Baldy lose his coach credential. 4. I love how her first response is, we can fix this. Fix what? Months of getting railed be gym guy, months of gaslighting, months of lying, months of denying your relationships, intimacy, months of belittling you behind your back. Fix it so you go back to being Mr. Complacent Husband so she can pick up with Jim Guy. You did the right thing. Stand up for yourself, look out for your best interests, your soon-to-be ex-wife certainly didn't. 5. Do yourself a favor ask the lawyer before sending the video to the sister. Not sure if a judge might think it's revenge adult content or something. Definitely tell him you have his sister on tape having sex with a gym rat in your beds. That should shut her up. She didn't deserve you. Opie, my lawyer told me not to share it. But I showed it to my SIL directly from my phone. Update 1. Hi everybody. I'm back with a juicy update. You'll enjoy this as much as I do. I'd like to cover some points before start the update. First I want to thank everybody who contacted me and gave me advice, congratulate me or just to let me know they care. I've read from other posts that the support you get is mind-blowing but it's the first time I experience so much care from strangers. From the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Second. To those who think my story is fake, you are entitled to think whatever you want. I just hope my testimony helps someone in the future as much as others have helped me. Third. About how I hit lover. It was not a fancy ninja punch, just a chop in the throat that, frankly, it was lucky I reacted before Baldy did. I won't lie, seeing him on the floor coughing felt great. Fourth. A quick summarize, Jane and I were trying to be parents for 10 years, on the eighth year we saved enough money to buy three opportunities in the most expensive and successful reproduction clinic here in my country. All three failed, Jane started her affair during the third one. That's the clinic where my blood was tested, and adding the history of diseases from my family, they gave me the probabilities of developing diabetes, gout, hypertension, and having strokes. I should thank them. Someone mentioned that Jane intentionally aber asterisk in the third shot because it might be lover's baby, well, that's not possible, because for her it's almost impossible to conceive naturally, the embryos were fecund in vitro and then implanted directly in her womb. I tried to repost my question but she came and told me, I don't want to have kids anymore, so I dropped it. I am sure Baldi doesn't have anything to do with her decision. This is important for later. Let's continue with the update. It's been 12 days since D-Day. What have I been doing from there? D-Day plus one, Friday. I had a nice chat with Mr. P, he confessed he faked his shoulder pain, he just wanted to warn me about Baldi. Also he told me a very nosy neighbor saw when I kicked Baldi unclothed from my apartment, surely in a week all condo will know my situation. My brother came to help me change the lock of the door. When he left I felt so alone and cried a lot. I called my job to ask for a day off. At night I spoke to my lawyer, he said he's making the divorce papers. He couldn't start until he had the evidence. So my divorce will be, divorce by mutual consent, that's smoother than, uncaused divorce, that's longer and pretty nasty. Also he told me not to share the video. Jane will be served in two weeks. My sister-in-law called me but I told her to AKS Jane why we're divorcing. D-Day plus 2, sat. My sister-in-law came over and I showed her the video, took her home and watched Jane's car, when I got home I was still crushed and cried some more. D-Day plus 3, son. I visited my parents, my mom cried with me, she really loved Jane, my dad had a chat with me about my money, properties and stuff. 
When I returned home Mr. P, told me Jane and Baldy showed up. I guess they are going to make public their relationship now that the cat is out of the bag. But strangely they came at different times. Jane came in the morning, she parked her car and saw mine wasn't there. Tried to enter my house but her key doesn't work anymore. Then she asked Mr. P, if he knew where I went, he didn't know and told her, Mr. O.P., gave me this for you, my attorney's card, she kept it and left. Baldy came in the afternoon and first asked to see Jane. Mr. P, told him, Mrs. Jane, emphasis on Mrs., doesn't live here anymore, then asked to see me and Mr. P, told him, Mr. O.P., is away. No idea when he'll return, and he left. I guess they both are not in contact yet. I wanted to ask about Jane. Is she sad? Did she look healthy? Did she ask about my well-being? But then I remembered D-Day and just thanked and say goodnight to Mr. P. When I got home I cried a lot again. D-Day plus 4, Mon. I didn't want to but something I learned from all you champions is to hit hard the gym, so I looked for a new gym near my job and had a good session, I felt pretty good. Then I returned to work. At home I didn't cry this time and start taking out all Jane's pictures. D-Day plus 5, Tuesday. Had a meeting with my lawyer to review my assets, fortunately, my dad made Jane sign a prenup, so she can't touch anything I had before we got married, my house mainly, all remaining stuff gets divided 50 to 50 and I can get a compensation for her adultery. As compensation I'm gonna take out alimony. I can fight for all the stuff, but everything reminds me of her. And I want to start anew. When I left home I heard whispers, I turned my head and saw two neighbors that immediately pretended they didn't see me, they walked in front of me and geeted me. I knew this would happen. A tear that I went to the gym and work, this repeats all week so I'm gonna omit. D-Day plus 6, wed, nothing interesting, I only have Facebook as social media. I ignore all DM asking me to contact Jane. I closed it and opened Reddit and had a nice time reading about all you champions that overcome what I have been experiencing. I felt better. So I thought of sharing my own experience. D-Day plus 7, Thursday, I started writing. I posted it before going to the gym. When I was at work, it amazed me how many people were reacting to my story. I answered some comments. D-Day plus 8, Friday, I was reading comments and answering all morning. I was smiling, feels good to be appreciated. Two comments stuck in my mind that I didn't think about. One, report lover to my old gym, and two, my home is tainted I need a fresh start. So before I went to the gym I looked for real estate agents to sell or rent my house. I'm not comfortable here anymore. I haven't entered to my bedroom since D-Day I've been sleeping in the spare room. I don't want to live like this. D-Day plus 9, sat, since Jane would come and bother me, I decided to spend the day outside. She did come, then she visited my parents and brother. They just texted me, Jane came. I answered, thank you, I don't want to talk about her yet. D-Day plus 10, son, I spend the day with my parents, we visited a town two hours from the city and had a blast. I don't know if Jane came. My dad told me not to sell my house but to rent it. I agree and went home. When I got home Mr. P, told me Baldy came in the afternoon and alone again. He asked for me but Mr. P, told him I'm away, he left without a word. D-Day plus 11, Mon, yesterday Monday morning I went to my old gym. I was not sure if I'd meet Baldy, he worked in the afternoon, but he was screwing my wife in the afternoon so I thought he's changed his shift. He was nowhere. I asked to talk to Frank, the gym owner. While I was waiting for him I met an old janitor I used to chat with, he told me to say hi to Miss Jane. I guess my new normal is to tell everybody we split up. I smiled at him. Frank finally received me. I asked about Baldy, he told me Monday is his day off, he asked for more hours and now he works from Tuesday to Sunday in the morning. Then I explained the reason of my visit. He listened carefully until I finished and finally showed him the video. He stayed silent and thinking. He said, you're not gonna like this. I just thought, what now? Frank called the receptionist to bring Harry, another coach and Baldy's friend. He has a big beard. Frank asked him to tell me about Baldy's girlfriend, 
fasten your seatbelts, this is good, according to Harry, Baldy is heads over heels for Jane and Frank confirmed it. He told me Baldy had many complaints specially from female members but for the last months he has changed. No complaints and he's very professional to all members. And Harry told me something that made my jaw drop. Baldy is trying to marry Jane by baby trapping her. I was processing this information when I felt something starting from my chest, it climbed up my throat and finally blowed up in my mouth. I laughed. I swear I was joker madly laughing. I even teared a bit. Frank and Harry were very confused. I thought, oh sweet karma, thank you. After I calmed but with a big grin on my face. Harry asked what was going on. And Frank explained, this is Baldi's girlfriend's husband. Harry made a shocked face, oh man. This is bad, this is really messed up, Harry left. Next we discussed about firing Baldi, Frank said he has to report the situation to the coach association, not real name, and he surely has to fire him because Jane was a gym member or Frank's gym could have legal repercussions. About his license as coach I need to make a legal document explaining Baldi is the reason of my divorce, the key number of my divorce case, and the video. My attorney will give the video to the coach association's attorney. I can't share it. Baldi will lose his license from that association, but he can go to another association and apply for another license. It'd take months though. I asked if Baldi can appeal. Frank said he might, but it would be a waste of energy. The association does not tolerate this type of behavior. Also he doesn't have the money to pay for somebody who represents him. That reminded me of the residential area where he entered with Jane I thought Baldi was wealthy. Frank brought his face closer to me, what residential area? I showed on the maps app. You tailed them to this place. I did, on D-Day minus one, Frank got angry, that's where my late father's house is. After Frank's father passed away, he inherited the house. All the equipment that's obsolete or needs repair goes to that house. He lent Baldy the key to go and keep some stuff occasionally but he does not have permission to stay there. He surely has a copy of the key and he might be living there illegally. He's going to investigate this further. I'll be easy since there are tons of cameras in that place. I was leaving the gym when I heard, Mr. Oak, Mr. O.P., wait. It was Harry. He told me he was sorry about what's happening, Baldy never told him who was his girlfriend. He just said that he met her at X Mall. I thanked him and took a step towards the exit, he rushed, can you tell me what happened? I told him, pretty much what you heard, he was screwing my wife and now I'm divorcing her, another step, what will happen to Baldy, that depends on Frank and the coach association, I tried to take another step, but, how are you handling it? Okay, now this is strange I stared at Harry and remembered Baldy went to my house twice I said, you called Baldy and he's on his way here, right? You are just buying time. Am I wrong? He made a guilty face. Please Mr. OP, talk to him, he's really desperate. He was crying yesterday. His girl, I mean your wife, isn't returning his calls, tell me, why should I care if he's rotting in hell? I'll be here with you so you don't be scared, I laughed, scared. Of that weakling? He didn't told you I kicked him out of my house unclothed, right? Harry didn't believe me. Fine, let's see what he wants, I saw there are cameras where we were talking and sat in front of a table in the reception. I don't think Baldy is ridiculous enough to attack me but who knows. Besides I'm really curious about what he wants. He came running 10 minutes later and saw me waiting for him. He extended his hand. I crossed my arms and left him with the hand hanging, what the hell you want? I looked angrily directly to his eyes. He sat in front of me, listen buddy, stop right there. We're not buddies, Mr. S, the janitor, is my buddy, you are not, he seemed apologetic, okay, my bad. I want to say I'm sorry for everything. I never wanted to hurt you and I really care about Jane, well, you just said three lies to my face. You are not sorry, you did mean to destroy my life and you just care about yourself, he changed from apologetic to annoyed, okay, whatever man. Just tell me where Jane is, last time I saw her was when I kicked her cheating body out of my house after I kicked you out unclothed, I know Harry was listening, Baldy's face changed color to red, that was a cheap shot, I should sue you, as far as I know, you entered my home illegally and perhaps you were abusing my wife. 
I have videos of you getting out but you didn't signed in, he changed again, okay, okay, I'm sorry. Tell me what you want from me, please tell Jane I need to talk to her, at that moment Frank arrived in a hurry, I guess he saw through the cameras that Baldy appeared, everything okay here? Everything okay Frank, I was just telling this slacker what I want, I stand up and speak close to Baldy's face, what I want is what's coming for you. What you deserve. What the law has prepared for you. I want to crush your dreams just like you did with mine. You want kids. Guess what? You won't and you will never have, Baldy said, what's that supposed to, but Frank asked him to see him in his office. Harry looked impressed, he grabbed Baldy's arm and pulled him, man, you are totally lost. I finally left. D-Day plus 12, Tuesday, I feel I am ready to face Jane now. I'm till grinning while I type this. So, how have you been? TLDR, I caught my wife with our gym coach in our bed and I know when and how it started. Best comments. 1. I'm sorry OP. You did everything perfectly. You can even sue the gym where Batty worked because he molested your wife by touching her, there should be cameras, and broke into your house. OP, didn't think about it. Thanks for the idea. 2. Especially if he showed up at your house without signing, it doesn't matter if your wife invited him, you can say he was bothering you who were his former client and have his license taken away. Op. I went to your profile and I saw that you and your wife were trying to get pregnant. Sorry for all this, but if she was having an affair and avoiding pregnancy, you might be able to sue her. I don't know the name of the reason and I know she already has a lot on her plate. I just wanted to mention it. Good luck. 3. Don't even know what to say bro glad you didn't give her a second chance though. Good luck in the future and wish you the best. Also don't forget to send the video to her family so they would know what a piece of trash she is. OP, already did. 4. You know what I found really painful? Why do these women always go for the dumbest guys? Is it because they know we think they are bad boys and it subconsciously turns them on? To bang a guy we can't stand. Awesome job punching that bad person's throat though and kudos for keeping your composure through the discovery phase. I would have caught my ex much sooner if I had that ability. 5. They say you marry one person and divorce another. Expect antics, accusations and mind games. Don't play. Noticed your profile makes it look like you were trying to have a baby like a month ago and it wasn't going so well. Any chance she couldn't have a baby because she was on BC so she could mess around with Baldy? If so I would include the cost of the treatment in the divorce. OP, indeed. We were trying since 2020. I guess it's not important anymore. We gave up but you're right. I can also include the cost of the treatment in the divorce. 6. The ultimate betrayal is sleeping with someone in your bed. I also think there's a lesson within a lesson here OP. You agreed that changing gyms would be for the better and would solve the problem. This is called geography. Like an addict moving away from an area that's riddled with Drew Star. The problem is still the addiction. OP, we both agree to change gym, but you are right. That only delayed the result. The real problem was in her head, but she didn't want to go to therapy saying I was the one who needed it. Sad. Friends comment what you think about this story share your experiences also give me like, subscribe and click on the bell for more Caspel stories. Update 2. Update 2. Jane sent me a letter explaining what lead her to cheat. Hi again. I didn't expect to update so soon but something important has happened that I'd like to share something that my therapist told me. Do you remember I started therapy because Jane suggested I'm having trust issues? Turns out I don't have any. I'm one step to became a very gullible person. But the therapist noticed I have a lot of insecurities due to my obesity. Since I remember I was the chubby nerdy guy at school. Never boyfriend, always best friend. I had my first girlfriend at 18 and she dumped me a week later for a better looking guy. I went to an engineering high school, so ladies were few. My next relationship was at my 20s with a very toxic girl who blamed me for everything even for the rain, she really did a job on me making me feel guilty for anything that pops in her mind. Later I started working because my family had money problems and I didn't had another relationship until I met Jane at university. The previous session to the last one with my therapist, we discussed my feelings about not having kids. 
she has helped me to get my priorities in order. Numer 1, me and everything that covers myself like physical, health, gym and eating well, intelligence, studying, learning, emotional challenges, and soul, beliefs, moral, ethics, number 2, people who lives with me, Jane, number 3, family and friends, number 4, work, number 5, leisure and entertainment. Last session was about Jane. The therapist asked about my plans, I told her I will divorce Jane. She told me it is normal I'm in such distress because my priority too is crumbling. I will have to pass for similar stages of grieving death, denial, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance, I had to google them because I forgot them. I am in the bargaining stage because I'm thinking a lot of, what ifs, e.g, what if she really is remorseful? What if we're the golden couple who will survive an infidelity? But the reality is that I will never trust her ever again. It will kill me knowing she's at home alone doing Jesus knows what when I'm at work. Torture for me. Depression is a dangerous stage in my case because it can lead me to gain weight again, should stick to the gym and watch closely my diet. Hope this info helps people who are grieving. Now the update. I've been very busy. I applied for a promotion at job, I could have taken it long time ago but it demands lots of traveling. I feel it will help me heal to be away. Also I've been looking for a new place to live and I found one small apartment perfect for me. I've already paid three moths of rent in advance. I'll move as soon as possible. I haven't seen Jane since D-Day or Baldy since that Monday when, I am sure, he was fired. On the bright side one of my neighbors, a lady in her fifties, meet me in the condo's elevator. She told me she hasn't seen Jane lately, I told her we're slipping apart, and then she happens to remember she's having a dinner and her single niece is coming for a few days and I'm invited. It took me by surprise, looks like I'm in the market again. My attorney told me Jane was going to be served last Friday, but we had some festivities in my country so she was served last Sunday morning at my in-law's home. The following Monday somebody, Jane, I guess, slided a letter under my door. Three sheets back and front, from Jane. Mainly explaining about what lead her to cheat. Here we'll introduce the second villainess in the story, a co-worker we'll call her Flirty. I've met her sometimes at Jane's work events, like Christmas or anniversary celebrations. She's really thin, almost skinny and usually wears a lot of makeup, also she thinks every man want to sleep with her. One time she told Jane I was staring at her. I did once, because I could see her ribs and I thought she was unhealthily thin. Anyway, according to Jane's letter when she lost weight, Flirty approached her because she wanted them to be best friends since they are the two hotties at work. That's when the brainwash started. Flirty made her think she deserves a better man. She's entitled to. She told her I was a pathetic man that will try to own her now that she's hot. When the incident with the Smith machine happened, Flirty said Jane, see, see? Didn't I tell you? He wants to be your owner more than your husband Jane bought it and due to Flirty's manipulation she was resentful to me for months. When we attended the gym at different times, Jane met Baldy accidentally at the mall and he approached her. She confessed she had a crush for a guy similar to Baldy before I met her, she never told me that before. They went to lunch and both flirted. Jane showed Flirty Baldy's Facebook picture and she told him that she's going to be a fool if she didn't have sex with him, besides her pathetic husband, me, doesn't compare to that, Greek Jesus. She had the opportunity, she was eager to, so she did. Baldy took her to his house that coincidentally is close to the mall where they ran into each other, so she does know that's Frank's dad's home, all this happened nine months ago. Flirty is a professional cheater, she told Jane how to cover her tracks, the work words code, to hide Baldy's contact and to hide her map tracking historial. She even told her that changing her phone password is ridiculous because I'll immediately suspect. Jane noticed Baldy hated when she talked about me and as punishment he made hickeys on her body, now I remember she started using pyjama to sleep because it was cold. He used to trash me but she never played along. Meanwhile Flirty used to tell her that she's entitled to this romance and I deserve being cheated on because I'm a beta. During those months she says she liked the sense of danger, the excitement and the relationships with the bald guy was good, but it also hurt her to see me struggle trying to be a better husband and to know that she was the reason for my pain. It was easier to ignore me and continue with the pleasure Baldy gave her. D-Day arrives. 
I completely blindsided her, she thought I was clueless. I'm going to write this part just like she wrote it, I was in shock and I covered myself with the blanket by pure instinct. When I reacted I saw you pushing and kicking Baldy out of the room and the house. When I heard you closing the door and coming back I didn't know what to say, I have never seen you this angry before. Then you said, I have never hurt you nor will I, that's true, in the years we've known each other you have never hurt me, not even when we found out that it's my fault that we can't have children, after that she heard me crying in the spare room, she wanted to comfort me but how could she? In the main door we have a mirror to check ourselves before going out, she looked at herself but she couldn't bear the look. When she entered her car she cried and told herself, what have I done? Baldy called her that night, but she blocked him. He arrived at his sister's house around midnight, two hours after the drama, his house is about 40 minutes away from mine. She was scared of telling his sister what happened because she's older and she has a very strong character. Next day she told Flirty what had happened, Flirty told her she should be happy that she got rid of me. I'm going to copy this part too. J, and then what? F, baby, you're free, you can have relationships with Baldy or any guy you want. J, and then? F, I don't follow you. J, what will happen when I'm tired of having relationships with a buck of guys? F, then you can decide which one date seriously. J, and then what? F, I don't know, get married I suppose. J, but I already had a marriage. F, but it was with OP. He's a loser, I bet Baldy is 100 times better than him. J, no, that's not true. He gave me a good life. F, don't settle for so little. You can have a better man. Then they proceed to have a big fight in front of the co-workers, she can't recall it well, but she remembers swearing and yelling at her. Flirty told her that any guy hotter than me is better than me, I don't get what she has against me, but Jane realized what she destroyed. She was inconsolable and her boss let her go home early. The next day is when I showed his sister the video. Jane was babysitting his sister's twins. After I drove her home, his sister asked Jane to help her going to do some errands, just the two of them. That was a lie, they parked at a park and she demanded to know what was happening in her head to cheat on me. Jane cried and told her, I don't know, his sister confessed she was envious of our marriage. Eleven years and not a huge fight. We both looked happy. She couldn't believe her little sister was capable of such thing. Jane was there for his sister when her ex-husband left her for another woman. Jane asked her not to kick her out, but his sister told her she can stay, after all, that house belongs to both of them, but she let her know she's very disappointed and she will side me if I ever need her help. Jane understood. Next Sunday Jane came to apologize but I was not home, when she received my attorney's card, she called and my attorney confirmed I hired him. She knew I was really going to divorce her, so she went to her new home and wrote a confession and sent it to everybody we both know. I started receiving messages and phone calls the following week but I didn't want to read or answer. Now I've read some of the DM and it is what she said, most of them want to comfort me. One of her cousins said it takes guts to confess, so I should give her a try. The following week she tried to distract herself with work, but it seems everybody now knows she cheated. If you are unfaithful, in my country people see you like an easy woman, so female co-workers don't talk to her, particularly flirty. And male co-workers are annoyingly friendly to her. She asked to be relocated but it'll take months, so she quit her job the following Friday. She has a good amount of savings, we had our finances separated and since I was the big earner, I paid for almost everything. Next day she was looking for me in her words, to beg me take her back. She came here but when she saw I wasn't home, she went to my parents my dad refused to speak to her, but my mom was sympathetic and told her that she's sorry about all this, but her son, me, is really hurt and asked them not to talk about her anymore. Jane understood but then went to my brothers. He told her OP is not here and frankly I don't want to talk to you, and closed the door in front of her face. She came back to her new house very sad. All last week she has been reflecting about her actions and she's been really depressed realizing how much damage she has done to our relationship, to her family and mine. And all for meaningless pleasure coming from a ridiculous that, in her words, believes vaccines are just a pharmacy scam, and believes in astrology, yeah, Baldi is heavily tattooed, he has a Taurus sign on his arm. His sister suggested her to go to therapy. 
I don't blame her, if my brother were in the same situation, I'd be very disappointed but I'd try to make him raise what is wrong with him. She finally went to therapy and her therapist suggested writing me this letter and come clean to me. So she says all written in the letter is true. She swears on her life if I take her back, there will be no spouse in the history of humanity more grateful, loyal and honest than her. She suggests total access to her social media, that I already had. She will always answer my calls no matter the situation and to never have friends that I don't approve. There are more things about family and friends that I don't think it's important to share. Besides it needs a lot of context. Finally she pleads to meet me and let her apologize properly to my face. In her words, sorry doesn't start to describe what I'm feeling right now. What do I think of this letter? The things I can confirm is that she hasn't contacted Baldi till that Monday when he was fired and she confessed to family and friends. The rest could be partially true also I am sure it's been sweetened. For example she does not mention when she called me jealous and immature. She does not mention letting Baldi do her raw and she let him finish inside. She can give me all her passwords, but she lied to my face and gaslighted me for 9 months, according to her, and she was very good at it, besides I don't want to be her jailer. As I said I will never trust her ever again. Whenever I see her face, I'll also see Baldi's nape in front of her. I will not be her second option nor will be a doormat. I haven't replied yet, but I think I'll see her next weekend. TLDR, Jane sent me a letter, this is what she wrote and my reaction. Friends comment what you think about this story share your experiences also give me like, subscribe and click on the bell for more Caspel stories. Best Comments 1. You know what you need to do, she cheated on you for almost a year and it took her getting caught to realize how horrible she was. Go through with your divorce. It's bad, but you will find someone who wants to be with you wholeheartedly. Not just until, something better comes along. I'm so sorry this happened but you will be fine in the long run. Good job seeking therapy and trying to find peace in all of this. You are stronger than you think you are. Go forward, my friend. 2. My mom had a co-worker that constantly told her to cheat on my dad. We're talking over 10 years telling her that garbage, dad drank. My mom hit a breaking point and lots of men always made passes at her. What did she do when she finally got fed up? She came home and yelled at my father that it takes two people to make a marriage and they were going to go to counseling, she already made the appointment. The co-worker came up in counseling because she had told my dad to his face my mom should cheat on him. Mom's answer, the co-worker is so unhappy with who she is that she sleeps with everyone to feel better. Why would she listen to someone that's broken and can't fix herself? My parents were married over 49 years when my dad passed away. Mom got asked out after he passed and still wouldn't date. Your wife's excuses are just that, excuses and not good ones. Move on and know that there is someone else out there for you. 3. She placed the blame on someone else again. She did what she wanted to. End of story. She cut off Baldy. So what she never should have been in contact with him. She apologizes. There never should have been something to be sorry for. Her letter was just professing how she felt great with another man and it's her co-worker's fault, not hers. Ridiculous. I'll leave my petty comments aside, but heck, he should never have written that letter. I cheated on OP. Is what she told everyone, she didn't mention that. OP caught a guy flirting with me, and I enjoyed it so I made OP feel like a fool, then I lied and made OP's life bad while taking another man on me. All while OP worked and tried to be a better husband for me and all I did was sleep around more, while still making OP feel like he was the problem. 4. She knew she had no future with Baldi when she started sleeping with him. You were always her future, her security. She knew it would have to end someday, but she did everything in her power to make the affair last as long as possible. She lied to you, accused you of being an evil and flawed person, made you get unnecessary, expensive, time-consuming therapy so she could have another window to please Baldi. She made elaborate plans to hide this from you, nine months later she had no guilt, doubt or desire to have it end while she was mocking you for what a gullible fool you were. She blames Flirty for talking her into it, but for nine months. Again your wife was mocking you while she was acknowledging the pain she was putting you through. What more could she have done to you? What if they could have had a future together?
Your wife did this to the one person that she made the most sacred promise a person can make to another individual. She broke this vow while you were a great partner trying to be the best you could be for her. How you could even think of being friends with someone that did what she did to you. 5. First off, you are a king. Now, I've read every post and I'm going to hit you with the stone cold advice. Number 1, don't respond to the letter. Ever. Do not engage with that easy lay. Do not engage. You're on a great road to recovery. Don't let that snake derail all your hard work. Number 2, in the letter, she blames Flirty. Never once does she take any responsibility for her actions. Dude, she is no different than she was when she was letting Baldi unload in her raw. She's a disgusting, vile, selfish, lying cheater. Nothing more. Never forget the manipulation and calling you jealous all the time he was screwing this person. Never forget how she made fun of you. The boss has no idea haha so when she writes her nonsense in the letter about the baldy making fun of you but she didn't participate, it's all lies. She played an easy woman for this clown for almost a year and made fun of you the whole time. She's a liar and always will be. Her letter proves this. Ignore this gutter trash. Number 3, you are a good man with a good heart. You work hard and are a man who is trying to better himself. You deserve better and you will find better. The world is filled with wonderful, loving women who want to share a life. You'll be on the market again in no time, but remember your insecurities. Keep going to therapy and work those out because they will resurface in future relationships if you don't. Lastly, the best revenge is a life well lived. Do not look back. Only forwards. Remember how easy it was for her to become an easy gutter snake as soon as she lost a little weight. You wouldn't have done what she did. She is ridiculous and has nothing to offer you. She made her despicable choices to cheat, lie and try and emasculate you all because you, she's selfish, weak and pathetic. You have outgrown her already. She can't even do the bare minimum and admit to her mistakes. It's flirty, it's baldy it's everyone's fault but hers. No. You are a king and she is a snake. Time to rule your own life again. Good luck bro and reach out if you need a friend. Stay strong. I'm proud of you. Friends comment what you think about this story share your experiences also give me like, subscribe and click on the bell for more Caspel stories.